The next item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 12476 in the name of Christina McKelvey on MND Awareness Week 2018. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Uh, I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Christina McKelvey to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Can I ha uh, pay a grateful thanks to uh, the colleagues across the Chamber who signed the motion to allow us to have this debate today? President Officer, the 21st of June is the day of global recognition of motor neuron disease. And when I hear any mention of motor neuron disease, my ears instantly perk up because for me it's personal and not professional. You see, when I hear the words motor neuron disease, it recalls for me the pain, the fear, the grief, the loss and the shock that comes with the diagnosis, not just for the person affected, but for their families too. Motor neuron disease has no boundaries. It isn't determined by your age, your lifestyle or your wealth. It strikes at any point in your life and has differing degrees of speed and impact. Motor neuron disease is a rapidly progressing neurological terminal illness. Motor, ne motor neuron disease stops signals from the brain reaching the muscles. The muscles start to waste and weaken and eventually stop working. This may cause someone to lose the ability to walk, talk, eat, drink, or even breathe unaided. Some people may also experience these changes which affect their behavior and their ability to think and plan. Not everyone will develop all the symptoms and how it affects individuals can vary significantly. For this reason, that's why the current Motor Neuron Disease Scotland campaign to bust the myths around motor neuron disease is so vitally important. And they have a brilliant video that you can share to get the message out about MND and what it means, tackling the stigma and ending the discrimination. No one person is the same, and that's why the Motor Neuron Disease Register is so important. The more data we have, the better we will be at ensuring better short, medium and long-term care. Presiding officer, when I started raising these issues in this chamber 11 years ago, it was on one of the first speeches I made in the chamber, and it was a debate held by Margaret Mitchell. But it was 11 years ago, and 11 years ago, the average life expectancy was 14 months. That's now 20 months. And I believe that's because of that better care and more joined up support. And you may think it's only six months, but I'll tell you that six months is incredibly precious to the people with motor neuron disease and their families. And when I hear the words motor neuron, Dis motor neuron disease Scotland, then I am filled with another set of emotions. They are pride, determination, and above all, hope. An amazing thing happens when we find out a friend, relative, or colleague has been diagnosed with motor neuron disease. We spring into action. I have seen this happen with so many times over so many years with those involved with motor neuron disease Scotland. People abseil off buildings, zip slide across rivers, climb into forgotten cities, walk great walls and walk over fire to raise money and awareness. These actions give us all hope in the darkest of hours. They tell us that people care. They tell us that people will literally walk on fire to make things better. And that's why when I hear uh, motor neuron disease, I also hear hope. Hope that we'll find the routes to better care and through the Scottish Government funded specialist MND nurses or ideas for better support and the hope that the research will eventually bring that cure. I believe the work of the Ewan Macdonald Research Centre with Professor Shandran and his team at Edinburgh University will make that much hope for breakthrough that takes us on to that much needed cure. And that's why the research funding from both Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and the Scottish Government is so vitally important. PhD students in our land working hard to understand and treat motor neuron disease, working in conjunction with our best universities should surely give us all that hope that I speak of. One of the cruelest aspects of motor neuron disease is the likelihood of some people to lose their voice. Our voice is such a distinct part of our personality and many of us in this place surely like the sound of our own voices, but how would we feel if we couldn't raise them? We use our voices to raise the concerns that we all have in this debate today. And we used our voices here to add to the Voice Bank project, a project that just might give you back your voice, your own voice, instead of an electronic voice. How powerful, powerful is that? 
The Motor Neuron Disease Scotland Let Me Speak campaign resulted in the Scottish Government giving the right to communication equipment for, from our NHS, and this came into force this March. It will give those who need it the necessary equipment like iPads and eye gaze technology to enable them to continue to communicate effectively. Another reason for that hope. And if any of you heard the amazing speech last night from broadcaster Dennis Dick using his own electronic voice, you will understand what an amazing um, commitment that is to provide that equipment to people. Now, I know that navigating the benefit system can be a daunting task for anyone, but if you have suddenly lost your job due to your diagnosis or a fam family member has to give up their job to take on a caring role, the last thing you need is impenetrable forms and complicated processes to go through to get what you are entitled to. Mix that with the constant reassessment and appeals, then it all seems too hard to get anywhere and get what you need. When the Social Security Bill went through this Parliament recently, I saw a great opportunity to change that system to one of support, dignity and respect. I supported MND Scotland's campaign, Get Benefits Right, and was delighted to hear Jean Freeman, our Social Security Minister, announce automatic entitlement and lifetime awards for people with MND. You have no idea the impact that will have on people's lives. The difference it will make to families is immeasurable and welcome and I know only too well from what my family went through to get that support how important that is and with the two the new two-person MND Scotland advocacy support team if you've not met them you should I'm sure no one will wait very long for the help that they need and its first two months 40 families have had support from the advocacy team bringing much needed hope again that word hope to those families as I am sure you will all be well aware, I could go on about this topic, but I'm very keen to hear from my colleagues across the chamber and their experience, and I know that you all have different aspects that you wish to go on. But for those who have lost, we have lost, and those facing life with MND, let's face the future with hope in our hearts, because if we can scale mountains and walk on fire, we can find that cure. And I wish Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and all MND and ALS organisations around the world a hope-filled Global Awareness Day. Thank you. We move on to speeches of around four minutes, please. I have Kezia Dugdale followed by Miles Briggs. Thank you, President Officer. And can I start by congratulating Christina McKelvey on a wonderful speech and for her long-standing commitment to talking about and raising awareness of motor neuron disease, uh, always full of hope, always focused on the future and what it might deliver. Um, later on this evening, uh, President Officer, I'll be attending um, a fundraiser for motor neuron disease at Scotland in the name of my late friend Gordon Aikman, who throughout his life raised £600,000 uh, for motor neuron disease um, research, an absolutely phenomenal amount of money. And we promised in the event of his death to keep going and to keep raising funds uh, for his particular campaign with a goal of reaching a, a million pounds as soon as we feasibly could. And we hope to make uh, a big bit of progress tonight at the dinner. And part of that dinner involves uh, an auction which has a phenomenal uh, range of prizes, President Officer. I'm sure you won't mind if I do a little plug for that because you can bid online right now for some of these Can we bid here? You can <laughs> bid here. You could take your phone out of your pocket. I'm sure you've always wanted to do shopping from the chair there, Presiding Officer, and you're able to do that by using your mobile phone. Perhaps you're a Coronation Street fan because if you are, there is a, a guided tour for four people um, behind the scenes from, from Jenny McAlpine. We've got a signed Scottish a rugby shirt and we've even got a wicket from Scotland's win against England at the cricket just a week or so ago so a phenomenal range of prizes you can bid now please do so um, I'm also delighted to share with the chamber and it's recognized in Christina McKelvey's motion um, some news from ScotRail, who are the uh, fundraising partners uh, for, M for MND uh, this year. ScotRail passengers have themselves raised £104,000 since that uh, relationship between the charity and ScotRail has been established. But it's just been announced in the last hour, and I found out uh, on my phone, that they intend to um, name a train after Gordon. That's ScotRail's uh, latest development today. So it will be the Gordon Aikman Express. And I passed that note uh, to Neil Bibby during uh, First Minister's questions, who happened to 
tell me, uh, as a Thomas the Tank Engine fan, that Gordon was, in fact, um, the most powerful engine in Thomas the Tank. And that, I thought, is a very fitting um, message for Gordon because he was the most powerful engine behind so much campaigning work for motor neuron disease. If I could say to Scott Rail, I do hope that it's the 7.30 from Waverley to Queen Street that will be the, the train it serves because that was the one that he so often took when he uh, worked in Glasgow but, but lived in Edinburgh. And that allows me to make the connection between um, Gordon and MND Awareness Week because it was actually using uh, that train that made Gordon so aware of other people's judgments about MND as a disease because he worked for many months after his diagnosis but his body was weakening and he was unstable sometimes on his feet and that meant that sometimes he would trip and fall and the nature of his work was that he would get a train at half seven in the morning and he would also get a train very late at night and when people saw him trip and fall sometimes they just assumed he was drunk that he'd had a few too many drinks after work and a lot of people walked by. They didn't stop to help. They thought here was a guy that was just causing trouble and they kept on going. And he needed help to his feet. And once he was on his feet, he could make his way home. But far too many people walked by. And I think Motor Neuron Disease Scotland are doing a tremendous amount of work to break down the stigma around what, it, what the disease actually does to you and how people can respond. Christina McKelvey said a lot about the need to find a cure. I do hope that that cure will be found at Edinburgh University. There's every sign that that could happen. We've got 200 of the world's leading researchers sharing their data, sharing their research at the Ewan MacDonald Centre just now. What we need to do is to give them the capacity to bring clinical trials to Scotland. We've not had MND clinical trials in Scotland for 20 years, and we're currently in a race with scientists in Canada and Israel to find a cure. So I would encourage the Scottish Government to continue with um, its financial commitment to funding research and also continue to press the UK government to do their bit alongside the pharmaceutical companies that are so important to finding that cure. Finally, presiding officer, because I appreciate I'm going over time, there is a portal across the European Union for researchers to share the research they are doing into MND. Access to that portal could be affected by Brexit. I don't mean to make this too directly political, but political it is. In leaving the European Union, it is possible that Scotland will no longer be able to be part of this medical research portal to share their research with other European nations. I can't imagine this is high up the list of the Prime Minister's uh, priorities when it comes to Brexit, but I'm sure it can be on the list when it comes to the Scottish Government's priorities. Let's make sure if we're going to find a cure to MND, we find it here in Scotland, and I'm sure everybody's committed to that goal. Call Miles Briggs to be followed by Ruth Maguire. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by congratulating Christina McKelvey on securing today's debate and also for her long standing campaigning on behalf of people living with MND and their families across Scotland. Like Christina McKelvey, I want to be begin by paying tribute to the outstanding work of MND Scotland, who continue to do so much to raise awareness of MND and to support more than 450 people across Scotland currently living with the condition. Its new myth-busting animated video campaign is, I really do think, excellent and has the potential to make a real difference tackling some of the myths and stigma around people uh, with MND. And I want to again remember and commend my friend Gordon Aitman, as Kezia Dugdale has, um, whose you know, inspiring fight-back campaign achieved so much and, has, and whose positive legacy lives on in so many ways. Gordon's family and husband Joe Pike and, and his friends uh, Lawrence and, and Kezia Dugdale have really taken uh, that legacy forward and they're very much in our thoughts today and I wish the fight back dinner this evening every success. Um, I also want to praise the work of the Doddy Weir Foundation which has achieved a great deal in the years since Doddy revealed his MND diagnosis. I welcome the close working partnership as well between the foundation and N MND Scotland. And as has already been mentioned, I think it's, it's worth also to congratulate those at the ScotRail Alliance and especially the employees who continue to raise funds for MND Scotland. As Kezia Dugdale's outlined, more than £104,000 so far as part of their three-year charity partnership. Uh, the Class 170 train, branded with the MND Scotland Cornflower logo, now serving the Edinburgh Glasgow Queen Street route, is a great boost to the profile of the charity and of this partnership. 
One of the most exciting developments taken forward in recent months, as has been mentioned, is the new advocacy service launched by MND Scotland in April, which has already supported 40 families across Scotland. The new service is an important addition which can help ensure people affected by MND don't have to struggle alone through what is often the bureaucracy and delays around accessing social care, home, ad home adaptations and accessible housing. And I know from my work since I was elected around the Frank's Law campaign just what that often means for people under the age of 65 who are trying to access vital care and it's often the problematic side of that. And so I'm pleased therefore that we are seeing changes and that this parliament is actually listening to people and making the difference. And as from April 2019, the fact that people under the age of 65 who will be assessed as being eligible to receive free personal care will get that support regardless of their condition, age or means. As well as making sure we give the best possible and swiftest support to those diagnosed with MND and their families, all of us will agree that finding a cure for MND must continue to be our ultimate aim. I'm delighted that MND Scotland's committed to having a research portfolio worth £2.4 million by 2020 and that eight projects are already currently underway with a call for new research projects also live at the moment. As Kezia Dugdale has already uh, outlined, much of this innovative research is taking place here in our own region at the Edinburgh University. And I, I was uh, recently visited the Anne Rowling Clinic and was so impressed and excited by the ground, uh, groundbreaking research work which has been undertaken there at the Centre for Regenerative Medicine. Clinical research based at the Anne Rowling uh, Regenerative uh, Neurological, Neurological Clinic is, delivering or is already delivering collaborative clinical projects and we must make sure these are protected in the future and that's something I know as a member of the Health and Sport Committee we've been making sure has, uh, has been highlighted especially around challenges post-Brexit and it's this work including the work which I was able to see at the vo uh, around the Voice Bank initiative which is making such a difference and I know already that uh, the Voice Bank are still looking for regional uh, key regional voices and I'm pleased that many MSPs and, and Parliament staff have taken up the recent call for more voice donors to come forward. I think we should all be rightly proud that Scotland is leading this groundbreaking research and scientific progress. Scotland's at the forefront of international research on MND and it's brilliant that Glasgow will actually host this year's international MND ALS symposium in December. So to conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I again welcome today's debate as part of MND Awareness Week, and I wish all involved a successful week, which raises even more money to support people with MND and their families, and that, above all, we continue to focus and invest in research that one day will lead to a cure for this dev devastating condition. Ruth McGuire, followed by Anna Sarwar. Presiding Officer, I thank Christina McKelvey for securing debating time and bringing this important topic to the Chamber of our Scottish Parliament. I know that her connection and commitment to ensuring that people living with motor neuron disease have access to the best possible care and support is deeply personal and long held. At the MND reception last night, the Chair of MND Scotland, Lawrence Cowan, spoke really movingly of all the things that this disease takes from people. Uh, with the condition and, and takes from their families as well. But he also spoke of what it couldn't take and of the champions of their cause. And I'm sure that people living with MND and their families are grateful that Christina is one of those champions. Each day, each year for Motor Neuron Disease Awareness Week, work is done to highlight the stories of people affected by MND in the press. And the purpose of this is to spread awareness of MND and to share the physical and emotional challenges of those affected by this devastating disease. MND Scotland have had some wonderful campaigning successes. In March, it became a legal right for communication aids to be provided on the NHS. And their campaign also helped change the terminal illness definition within the Social Security Act to help give people with MND access to the benefits they need as soon as they need them. And this MND week sees the launch of another important new campaign, myth busting. People with MND deserve to be treated the same as everyone else. They deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. An investigation by MND Scotland earlier this year found that that was not always the case and responses to their survey and feedback from MND Scotland support groups highlighted the stigmas and misconceptions faced by people because of their condition. 
This year, these personal stories will tie into a wider multimedia awareness campaign aimed at highlighting and challenging the stigma and misconception that exists around motor neuron disease. And if I may share a couple of examples from um, of, of what's come up. Um, Gemma speaks about how when her mother was diagnosed with MND, she was pulled into HR at work because her slurred speech was slurred, um, her bosses believed that she was drunk. Um, Ruth um, went into a bank and felt she was treated differently because her speech was slow. Another Ruth shares her encounter of trying to book a hair appointment. But due to the reaction to her slurred speech, she felt she had to leave without making an appointment. When Pamela's daughter was diagnosed with MND, people thought that there was something wrong with her brain because her speech was slurred. And when Gordon's MND meant that he had to use a wheelchair, he found that people would cross the street to avoid interacting with him. Now, on top of the, all the difficulties that this disease brings, these everyday misconceptions and stigmas must have an awful impact on people and make the, the challenge that they're facing even harder. And um, so it's really important that we do everything we can to, um, to, to address them. Now, these stories are going to be in national, regional and local press um, to try and reach the maximum number of people. They're published online and on the MND Scotland website. So just in closing, a bit of a call to action to colleagues. We all love our social media channels. If we all share these stories with our, our friends, our followers and, and supporters, we can get a really wide reach across Scotland and do something positive this Motor Neuron Disease Awareness Week. Thank you. Anna Sarwar, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I don't think it's possible to uh, do a debate on MND justice after you've had speeches from Christina McKelvey and Kezia Dugdale on the issue. Can I congratulate both of them um, on their excellent contributions, and in particular to Christina McKelvey, who has been a huge supporter of MND Scotland um, throughout my time in this Parliament, probably long before my time in this Parliament as well. She has um, always brought forward this debate each year, hosts the parliamentary reception, speaks from experience and generally from the bottom of her heart in every debate around MND Scotland. So I congratulate her personally uh, for bringing this debate forward. Um, and also to my, my friend, Kez Dugdale, who has been a huge campaigner alongside um, Gordon Aikman ever since he was diagnosed. And I know um, from the passion that she speaks with, she will be campaigning on MND for the rest of her life until we find that cure um, for MND. Um, I've got to say, I've got to congratulate her on the auction prizes uh, as well. Um, what, there was a, a story that came to my mind as soon as she mentioned the Coronation Street and the four um, tickets to go backstage on Coronation Street, the wicket for cricket. Uh, and I think I'm perhaps on a sticky wicket when I suggest that that must be the positive outcome from her eating all the bugs when she was in Australia um, last year. So I congratulate her for that. Even then, she was thinking um, of Gordon Aikman uh, and this fantastic cause. Um, Pretty officer, 16 months since Gordon Aikman passed away, but his legacy and the campaign he led lives on today. His determination, his good humour, his spirit remains an inspiration to us all. Um, and the memorial dinner this evening in Gordon's name will be a chance once again to celebrate Gordon's life and all the work that he did and to raise significant funds to support the work of MND Scotland. And in supporting that work, supporting for people who have been diagnosed with MND, um, who need the care from MND specialists and also support around the family of anyone diagnosed with MND. Um, and I wish them every success, um, like they had last night, a huge success, uh, this debate today, success tonight, and also the Global Awareness Day um, as well. But the real prize, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, is finding that cure. That is the best tribute and the most fitting legacy for Gordon and for all the patients and all the campaigners and for indeed for MND Scotland. That's why every pound raised at dinner will help deliver a service for people currently living with MND and their families to crucially help find that money, to find that resource and to find that cure. So I want to welcome and applaud MND Scotland's work and all their amazing, amazing volunteers, including Lawrence Curran, their uh, chairman. And with a spend of around 2.5 million running through to 2020, we have a real chance to find that clinical research, to find that cure. And I think Scotland should be proud that we are leading that international work. Um, and that will be a proud moment for us again when we host this year the MND Symposium, uh, when we bring together scientists and clinicians from across the world 
to my home city of Glasgow to share their research, share their knowledge and share their learning as we hunt um, for that cure. I want to just close, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, just to um, ask some specifics from the, the Minister around the um, specialist nurses um, that we have for MND um, and thank them for the role that they play, which is a crucial role. Um, they have an experience and understanding of MND, but also other illnesses. Uh, and the crucial role that specialist nurses also play in identifying various stages about how to signpost uh, patients and families, where they can find support, where they can access treatment, where they can access benefits. And I would ask the Minister in, in closing if she could give us the um, update on what learning and consideration has been given to widening access to those specialist nurses right across the NHS, uh, across all health boards in Scotland. And in closing, once again, can I congratulate Christina McKelvey, congratulate MND Scotland, and wish them all the very best uh, in the future. Thank you. The, the last contributions from Brian Whittle. Hey, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also congratulate Christine McGilvey for bringing this uh, debate to the Chamber for another year and her continued support, uh, on tireless support in, in, uh, for MND. And in many ways, it's hard to believe it's been a year since we last highlighted MND Global Awareness Day and, and MND Awareness Week in this place. And it was a particularly difficult debate for me coming as it did uh, the day after my friend, the former Lions and Scottish Rugby International, Doddy Weir, made his diagnosis of motor neuron disease public and, and uh, for everybody in the chamber, you'll be well, uh, happy to hear that, that the tag of We Jesse uh, has not gone away. Uh, it has stuck in sporting communities and that probably will never go away for the rest of my life. Of course, if you expect from Doddy, uh, like Gordon Aikman before him, he has chosen to speak out and raise awareness of the devastation uh, that this, um, this disease brings uh, and that, that's what it takes to get things done. Speaking out, loudly and strongly about what's wrong and what needs to change. Of course, Doddy does speak louder than most. Uh, his fashion sense given him, uh, has given him years of practice of speaking to be heard above the noise of his rather exuberant suits. But I can also say that he's already surpassed uh, medical expectation and that he was told he would not be able to walk by now. He's still on his feet and he's still relentless in driving home the MND message, and that's uh, very much for his sporting heritage. If you want to, to, a, a, a sportsman to, to do something, tell him that he can't. Uh, as politicians, uh, we're in a prime position to hear about the impact conditions like MND have. We have received briefings from charities, we attend receptions, we speak a, to, to the medical professionals. But for me, the biggest insights always come from the people who deal with these conditions. Just like yesterday in the chamber, I was talking about the experience of one of my constituents who, who has cystic fibrosis, and for me, the words of her mother were far more powerful than anything that I could ever have written myself. More often than not, in this chamber, we speak about people with medical conditions in the abstract. We talk about patients and sufferers and their families, and often that's the right thing to do because difficult decisions have to be made, and sometimes that forces us to place rationale above the emotional. But there are times when the only way to achieve real change is to put a human face on the issue. Now, while Doddy's taken up the baton or, or picked up the ball, depending on your sporting preference, and run with it, the most prominent face in our minds today will that, of course, be for Gordon Aikman. And for many people in Scotland, most of their knowledge of MND's impact began from the interviews Gordon gave uh, in his MND diaries in the Sunday Times, which should be required reading uh, for anyone looking to understand just how much MND affects a person's day-to-day -day life. Gordon and now Doddy remind us that what we do matters, that the decisions we make in this place have weight and consequences, that who wins and loses politically matters a lot less than who wins and loses in life. And I'm looking forward to, to, to Gordon Aitman's dinner this evening that I know I, that, that I'll be attending as well. Uh, and, uh, and we'll also be hearing from Doddy again, who I think is doing the auction. So can I just brace yourself, just brace yourself. So raising awareness of conditions like MND allows us to put, uh, put ourselves in other people's shoes and, and helping us to make better decisions. The number of people with MND at any one time pales into insignificance against the number of people with, say, cancer or heart disease. But how we deal with these conditions isn't purely about numbers, it's about people. I've never had the opportunity to meet Gordon Aitman. I was in a room with him, I never got a chance to speak to him, but I didn't need to know, I didn't need to, to know that his loss is one that we should all feel. I see what Gordon and his Fight Back campaign did in such a short, short space of time, and I can't help but wonder what he could have achieved if he'd given the chance to live a, a, longer, and happy, a longer and healthier life. 
Gordon and Dory are uh, sources of inspiration, but it takes so many more people to make that inspiration a reality. It's the effort of everyone who raises the funds, campaigns for change, uh, and helps to educate us all that will in time deliver that uh, life-changing treatment or cure for MND we see in Christine McKelvey's motion. I can see I've got far too much to say here, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm going to go uh, to, to the very end, if I could. Um, I, just want, I spoke to Scott Hastings earlier in the week, who is part of uh, Doddy Weir's Foundation, and, and asked him uh, if, if it was an ask what he would ask for. And these are his words. He said that Scotland is a world leader in life sciences, and perhaps the Scottish Government could get further behind that research, especially MND research. The eyes and ears of the global MND community will be in, in Glasgow at the end of the year for their annual conference. I believe the Scottish Government can back MND here and with an unprecedented support for more research. As a foundation, we are trying to put in place Doddy's Docs, a concept, a concept that will look to encourage the brightest minds of the future to commit a life uh, to life sciences and MND. And the ask is that the Scottish Government join jo the Doddy on that journey. Deputy Presiding Officer. I now invite Shona Robson to respond to the debate. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'm very pleased to be able to respond on behalf of the government this afternoon as we mark MND Awareness Week and Global MND Awareness Day. And I want to thank Christina McKelvey for bringing this motion to Parliament, securing another important debate on uh, MND and recognising her personal commitment and experience uh, in this uh, issue. And also recognise the importance of the Bust the, the Mist campaign by MND Scotland. Uh, it's an organisation that uh, continues to refresh and make sure that uh, the awareness raising of MND is, is always uh, front of our minds and that is a, a very important role that they play. I join others in um, paying tribute uh, to the work that they provide in uh, providing an invaluable emotional practical support that has made such a positive contribution to so many people's lives as well as their relentless drive to find a cure that so many members have mentioned here today that will minimize the effects of this devastating condition we'll join with them and others tonight to shine a blue light on some of our buildings to raise awareness uh, of mnd much progress has been made in the last couple of years, so it's important to reflect uh, on some of those, recognising the dedication of those with MND or, or those impacted by the condition who are working with us to, to make a difference. And of course, Gordon's uh, Fight Back campaign was instrumental in driving changes. And uh, I just think it's fantastic that there's going to be the Gordon Aitman Express. I think uh, he, he would like that a lot. And, uh, also, Kezia Dugdale gave a, a good plug to some of the auction prizes. Uh, I'll certainly be having a look and encourage others uh, to do so. But you know, got one of Gordon's main achievements, of course, was the, um, the doubling of the number of MND specialist nurses. And of course, we now have an extra two and a half million pounds annually, ensuring that all specialist nurses are funded by the NHS. Uh, a, a real, a really strong uh, outcome and legacy for Gordon and his strength to look beyond himself to strive for others was an inspiring story of courage and tenacity and we've heard more from others sharing their own stories both from uh, members here today and elsewhere this week through MND's uh, Scotland's awareness campaign that emphasised the day-to-day -day reality of living with MND and one of the most uh, tragic impacts of course is losing the ability to speak and being able to communicate and having the freedom of expression is such a basic human right and something we take for granted. Um, and of course, we have legislated to place a duty on NHS boards supported by Scottish Government guidance to provide communication equipment to those uh, people who cannot speak or have difficulty speaking. Technology like Speak Unique is proving invaluable in supporting people to continue communicating. And I know that uh, Dennis Dick, as Christine McKelvey said yesterday, used this uh, used this yesterday at the parliamentary reception for MND to enable him to eloquently share his experiences using his own voice. Dennis and other people who use communication equipment tell us that it's vital that people don't just get a voice but get their own voice back and very powerful indeed. And that's why we provided £200,000 of funding to the Ewan MacDonald uh, Centre Voice Banking Research Project to pilot voice banking in the NHS which of course enables people's voices to be used to build personalized synthetic uh, voices for communication equipment when speech becomes difficult. 
testimony that innovations remain crucial to supporting people to live with MND and research is essential for the development of new and effective approaches to diagnose and treat uh, neuroprogressive conditions. And uh, I thought Kezia Dugdale made, made an important, important point about the, uh, the medical uh, research portal. And I can tell her that the Chief Scientist Office has communicated concerns uh, to the UK government on the potential uh, impact around research mobility, clinical trial regulations and funding short shortfalls. So happy to keep her uh, informed uh, as we continue to raise those issues. Just earlier this year, we hosted a research event uh, as we remain committed to working with partners to attract new clinical trials to Scotland and certainly in uh, response to Brian Whittle, we will uh, do whatever we can to, to help uh, to, do, to do that and uh, the Dodie Weir uh, campaign and the work he's doing is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, in, in this space. Since 2015, we've invested more than three quarters of a million pounds in MND research, including the £240,000 for a second clinical academic fellowship in MND research being delivered in partnership with MMD Scotland. And I uh, announced uh, more information on that earlier this week. Plus, uh, as we announced this time last year, there is, of course, the Gordon Aitman Scholarship Programme, which will be open for applications again today. Beyond the investment we as a government have made into research and specialist care, there are of course other pledges that we've acted upon which will have a great impact on the lives of those with MMD and those close to them who are coping with the condition too. Um, we have of course uh, provided funding to support implementation of the, the Care of Scotland Act, uh, which uh, again is, is important and indeed the 1st of April saw, saw the extension of new rights uh, to carers for support and information and new rights to be heard in decisions about support for those they look after and we've also of course as Miles Briggs mentioned legislated to extend free personal care to those aged under 65 which will come into effect on the 1st of April 2019 which will again will help people with MMD. Uh, Christina McKelvey mentioned the, um, the Social Security Act uh, which of course approval was given by uh, Parliament earlier this year. It's also a, a first step in building our own social security system in Scotland based on dignity, fairness and respect. And uh, of course, the central principle in our approach being to ensure that terminally ill individuals are provided with the support they need when they need it. And Christina McKelvey made mention of Jean Freeman's uh, uh, commitments around uh, this issue in relation to people with MND. We also continue to strive for improvements in the way our health and social care services are delivered. We're challenging healthcare professionals to ask what is important to the person receiving the care and to engage in shared decision making about treatment options. Listening to service users and providers is instrumental in getting it right, which is why our first national action plan on neurological conditions is very much being co-produced in partnership with clinicians, the third sector, and of course, those who live with conditions like MND. And I'd like to thank everyone for their continued support for this work. We've gathered evidence to understand the prevalence of neurological conditions, to understand the needs of people living with the conditions and to establish the current configuration of services. This week, we're holding three events to share the findings of our work so far and to discuss priorities for inclusion in the draft plan which we'll consult on later this year. We've also been working closely with Healthcare Improvement Scotland as it reviews its standards of care for neurological conditions to pro provide people with expectations about the quality of care that they should receive within healthcare settings. So, Deputy President Officer, I'd like to close this debate by thanking those who have allowed their personal stories to be shared. MMD touches the lives of many families across the country and this week's awareness campaign highlights progress uh, highlighting progress is also about culture change and building on what our society does to understand and support others to live their lives well. As a government, we will continue to work with partners across areas such as health, social care, welfare and housing to enact this transformational change for people with neurological conditions like MND. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until half past two. <laughs>